When we are talking about a square matrices, every of its entry has its cofactor. So we can find the cofactor of all the nine entries of this 3 by 3 matrix and we can write them to some matrix and we're going to call this matrix as a cofactor matrix. So cofactor of each entry can be obtained by eliminating the row and the column where this entry is located and finding the determinant of this matrix. So for example, if you would like to find a cofactor of the C2 entry, so this is going to be the determinant of the matrix which is obtained by eliminating the second row and the third column And additionally, it is multiplied to the minus 1 in a power of 3, 2 plus 3, where the 2 and 3 are the coordinates of this entry. So we can do this for all the 9 entries of this matrix. So let's discuss how we can use this matrix of cofactors to find the inverse of the matrices. So let's say we're given some matrix A. So if we would like to find such a matrix A inverse, so that their multiplication is equal to the identity matrix. And we would like to find the inverse of this matrix column by column. So let's discuss how we can find the first column of the inverse of the A. So it means that if you multiply the whole matrix A to the first column, it should be equal to the 1, 0, 0. If you multiply the whole matrix A to the second column, it should be equal to the 0, 1, 0. And if you multiply the matrix A to the third column, it should be equal to the 0, 0, 1. So let's talk about the finding the first column of this matrix. So basically, if you multiply the A to the first column, x1, x2, x3, it should be equal to the 1, 0, 0, which is the system of linear equations, right? Which is given in the form of Ax is equal to the B, and we can try to solve this using the Cromus rule. So the Cromus rule tells us that we can find the x1 by dividing the determinant of the so-called matrix B1 to the determinant of the A, where the B1 is obtained by substituting the first column of this matrix A with the right-hand side vector B. So let's do this. So this matrix B1 is going to be 1, 0, 0, A1, 2, A2, 2, A2, A3, 2, A1, 3, A2, 3, A3, 3. And the determinant of this matrix B1 can be found by just going through the first column, right? So we're going to multiply the 1 to its cofactor. 0 to its cofactor plus 0 to its cofactor, which is going to be simply 1 multiplied to the C11. So x2 can be obtained by dividing the determinant of the B2 to the determinant of the A, where this matrix B2 is obtained by substituting now the second column of this matrix A with the right hand side vector B. So let's do this. It is going to be A11. A2, 1, A3, 1, 1, 0, 0, A1, 3, A2, 3, A3, 3, 3. So the determinant of this matrix B2 can be obtained if we go through the second column, right? So this is going to be 1 multiplied to its cofactor plus 0 multiplied to its cofactor plus 0 multiplied to its cofactor, which is going to be simply 1 multiplied to the C1, 2. And X3 can be found analogously by dividing the determinant of the B3 to the determinant of the A, where B3 is obtained by substituting the third column of this matrix A with the right-hand side vector B, and all the other columns are remaining the same. So let's do this, A11, A21, A31, A12, A22, A32, 1, 0, 0, and determinant of this matrix B3 can be found by going through the third column. So we basically multiply the 1 to its cofactor plus 0 to its cofactor plus 0 to its cofactor. So in this way we can find the three components of the first column of the inverse. So the first column of the inverse of the A, which has the three components x1, x2, x3, can be written as 1 over determinant of the A multiplied to the C11, C12, C13. So actually, this, this looks like 
Larry, so it, it, it is the first row of the cofactor matrix. So if you remember, the cofactor matrix has the first row, the entries, right? So we basically can find the first column of the inverse of the A by just writing down the first row of the cofactor matrix as the column. And, my, and obviously, we need to multiply this to the reciprocal of the determinant of the A. So in this way, we can find the Y, the second column of the inverse, was the components Y1, Y2, Y3. So this is going to be 1 over determinant of the A multiplied as a C, T1, C, T, T, C, T3. So which is the second row of the cofactor matrix. And we're going to write this as a second column of the inverse. And the third column of the inverse can be found analogously, this is going to be 1 over determinant of the A multiplied to the C31, C32, C33. So we basically, what we need to do is we just need to transpose the cofactor matrix and multiply this to the reciprocal of the determinant of the matrix A. This is going to be the inverse of the A. So let's do an example. So let's say we're given a matrix. 1, 2, 0, 0, 3, 0, 0, 7, 1. And we would like to find the inverse of this matrix. So in order to do this, first of all, we need to find all its cofactors. So let's find the cofactor C11, C12, C13, the cofactors from the first row. So in order to do this, we need to eliminate the entries on the first row. Then C11 is obtained by finding the determinant of this matrix, which is going to be determinant 3, 0, 7, 1, multiplied to the one, plus 1, which is going to be 3. So determinant of the second one, when we reduce the first row in the second column, it's going to be 0 multiplied to the 1, multiply, minus 0 multiplied to the 0, which is 0. And the C13 is obtained when we eliminate the first row in the second column, uh, the third column. So, which is going to be also 0 multiplied to the 7 minus 3 multiplied to the 0, which is also going to be 0. So, now let's find the cofactors from the second row. So, the C, T1, C, T2, C, T3. So, in order to find the C, T1, we need to eliminate the second row and the first column. And we're going to multiply this to the minus 1 because minus 1 in the power of plus t plus 1 is going to be minus 1, multiplied to the determinant t is 0, 7, 1, which is going to be equal to the minus t. So the c, t, t is obtained when we eliminate the second row in the second column. So this is going to be plus 1, 0, 0, 1, or simply equal to the 1. And the c, t, 3, it's going to be when we eliminate the second row and the third column. And we additionally multiply this as a minus 1, Multiply to the determinant 1, t is 0, 7, or this is going to be simply 7. So now let's find the cofactors from the third row. So it's going to be C31, C32, C33. So in order to do this, we need to eliminate the third row, then the first column. So the determinant of this matrix is obviously equal to the 0 because it has 0 column. So if you eliminate the second column. It's going to be again 0 because it, it still has a 0 column. And the cofactor of the C33, it's obtained by eliminating the third row in the third column. And we multiply this as minus 1 in the power of 3 plus 3, multiply to the determinant 1, 2, 0, 3, which is going to be equal to the 3. So we obtain the matrix of cofactors. So the matrix of, of cofactors, it is going to be so C11, C12, C13, which is 3, 0, 0, minus 2, 1, minus 7, 0, 0, 3. So we can find the determinant of this matrix A by going through any of its rows, right? So let's go through the second row in order to find its determinant because it has a lot of zeros there. What we need to do is we need to multiply the 0 to its cofactor plus 3 to its cofactor plus 0 to its cofactor, so which is going to be simply 3 multiplied to its cofactor, c t t is equal to the 1, so the determinant is equal to the 3. The inverse of this matrix A is obtained by dividing the determinant of the A to the 1. 
uh, 1 over determinant of the A multiplied to the C transpose, the cofactor matrix transposed, so which is going to be equal to the 1 over 3 multiplied to the 3, 0, 0, minus T, 1, minus 7, 0, 0, 3. So this is how we can obtain the end result of matrices using the cofactory method. So please note that if the determinant of the A is equal to the 0, the inverse does not exist, and obviously this formula doesn't work.